Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Yeah, well, they were um, holding hands, eating, spending a lot of time together. Oh, my God. Is that who you were with whenever Brayden was screaming for formula? When Brayden was screaming for food, you... From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing's going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up. Get up. Get up. Whoa, whoa. This is, like, not how this is supposed Whatever. to work. Just go. Go with him. I love him. Real Reality Television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thanks for watching another episode of Cheaters. Please welcome Kristen Cohn, a homemaker concerned about the late hours her husband keeps. Fed up with a multitude of excuses, Kristen contacts Cheaters in hopes of dispelling her anxiety. Kristen Cohn, age 24, a homemaker who senses possible adultery due to her husband's refusal to spend time with his family. Everything was great in the beginning. We spent time together. He took me out. He basically never left my side. If I went to the bathroom, he walked me there. Whenever I came out, he walked me back out. I got pregnant with my daughter, and then we got married and everything was really good up until I had my daughter. Um, I gained a lot of weight with my daughter, roughly about 75 pounds. And after I had her, about a month or two after she was born, he was going out constantly, um, lying to me about where he was, who he was with. I've caught him on his cell phone whenever it's answered and he had no idea that his cell phone is answered and he's sitting there buying females drinks they're all talking in the background I don't know if he was just flirting if there was anything going on because his cell phone would always go dead on me while I was listening but I would catch him giving them lines like pick up lines the thought of him with someone else makes me feel betrayed it it hurts it um Basically, I took my vows very seriously, and um, I'm sorry. I feel like if he's out looking for something else, then he's lost whatever it is he's felt for me. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Brent Cohn, age 26, a salesman who may be closing romantic deals during his off hours. Investigation day seven. Cheaters' crews pursue the case for several days, but the suspect is elusive. Although it is known through Kristen that he is not at home, his whereabouts often prove to be difficult to lock down. On this day, however, Cheaters' detectives finally get their man as he heads towards a local sports bar to throw down a few beers with an unknown female companion. At this point, it's difficult to determine the nature of their relationship. But one thing is quite clear. Kristen waits alone at home with her children as Daddy callously disregards his family's needs. Investigation day 10. 
On this afternoon, the suspect's vehicle is spotted outside a well-known watering hole, and Cheater's detectives head inside, fearing the worst. From an inconspicuous angle, Cheater's sleuths quickly capture the suspect and a second unknown female companion as they drink and smoke after a long day's work. But apparently, professional conversation with a colleague simply isn't enough for the suspect as the two head off toward yet another restaurant for some vittles and more romantic conversation. The evidence of infidelity begins to mount as the two are seen holding hands and caressing each other flirtatiously inside their private booth. Although the female companion initially rebuffs the advances in a friendly manner, the drinks and conversation continue to flow. By the time the two leave the eating establishment, the silver-tongued salesman has begun to close in upon his prey. They pull into the parking lot where they left the female companion's vehicle hours earlier, and the couple engages in some lusty displays of affection. The suspect cautiously looks around so as not to attract attention, but continues with his seduction when he sees the coast is clear. There is conclusive evidence of marital infidelity, and Cheater's detectives exercise Kristen's right to know the truth about her husband. After the break, the confrontation. With irrefutable proof of Brent's betrayal in hand, Cheaters locates Kristen to disclose the unseemly details. Remembering the vows once spoken between she and Brent, Kristen attempts to maintain her decorum. The reason that you brought us on was to find out what's going on, get you the truth. Because honestly, what's been happening in your life? Well, he goes out, stays out all night long. Um, he won't tell me where he is. And being a wife, I think I deserve that. What I want to do, and the reason I brought you here tonight, I thought we had gathered enough evidence to, to go ahead and, and show you. So why don't we take a look at it? OK. On this day of investigation, we caught him having dinner with this woman. It didn't look much like a business dinner. Yeah. Uh, I know he's in sales. Yeah, he always tells me he's got business dinners, and that's why he's late. And... Yeah, well, they were uh, holding hands, eating, spending a lot of time together. A big red flag came up. This was early in our investigation. On this day of investigation, this is a, in the parking lot of Dave & Buster's. OK. We were on him for quite a while. They spent two hours there. They left and went to another location where here they parked, holding hands, and went to this other restaurant, hung out together. Obviously, that's not what a business dinner is. We follow them en route back to Dave & Buster's. She had left her car there. Here they are pulling back in. Then. Oh my god. For some reason, he frequents hotel bars. And he's at a Holiday Inn right down the street. Why don't we go ahead and get in my truck? OK. And, and we'll go over and let's deal with this, OK? OK. Are you all right? Yep. I'm very happy to see that you have your sister. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> I know with children involved, it makes the whole situation different. There's his car. Yeah, right there. There's his uh, Jeep. Come on, let's go. Hang on, one second. 
second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You sorry? Cheating on me? Who is this? Did you know I'm his wife and he has two babies? He has a daughter that's going to be two next week and he has a seven-month-old baby. What is this? My name's Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheater. Surveillance on you for the last few months. I have no idea about this. I saw you all you over her. You... Coming up, the conclusion. My name's Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheaters. Surveillance on you for the last few months. I have no idea you about this. I saw you, you all over explain? her. You... What do you have to say for yourself? Explain to me. You have got to be. I saw videos of you. No, this is You've no, got a I've baby seen at home. vides of you. You this have is, a seven-month-old baby. This is ridiculous. No, it's not get, ridiculous. Get Can you explain no. to your wife? Ugly, for Christ's sake. She's this an ugly is... dog next to your wife. How this old is she, this Brent? This is ridiculous. How I'm old leaving. is she? This is ridiculous. You with somebody that looks like your mother? You know, I can leave here with her. You have something to explain to me and to my baby. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. To me and Avery and Brayden. Get those cameras out of my face. You have a seven month old at home, you man. Of me all you, want. you don't have any shame? I have nothing to say to me. Is that who you were with whenever Brayden was screaming for formula? When Brayden was screaming for food, you. Huh? Hey, Marshall, Marshall, stop that. Wait a second. Don't let that happen. Is that who you're with? You Wait stay away from my husband. I'm not going to hit you, but you stay away from him. Okay. Don't you get all over him. He is my husband. We're heading now. You are a cheating. You are an adulteress. Okay. okay. You are an adulteress. Come on, let's go. Need y'all to You are a cheating. We're going to leave. She's going. You saw what she did twice. Thank you. Good. All right. I'm sorry. I... You woke him up, the idiot. Can't feed his baby, but he can go spend money on a. Yeah. Here, come here. You want to go to Come here. They can film me all they want to. Bring him on. Just take a breath. Breathe for a minute. Just breathe. We'll get your sister out here, okay? Tiffany, I'm she warning really you. Did. Get away from me. I don't have to, Brent. This is a free country. I'm not she assaulting you. I'm not doing anything. People saw it a bunch. Okay. I'm not. I'm not assaulting you or anything. She is going to jail. But she's got two babies. You're gonna send yeah. the mother of your two Tiffany, babies to jail. What are Avery and Brent gonna do? You're gonna take care of them? You know what? You're gonna leave. You think you're gonna take care of them? I asked that. Sorry. He's cheating. He's told me no. He's told me that I'm the only one he wants to be with, that he loves his family and wants his family. And that's the way he shows Every it. time I've, I was about to move and he cried begging me back. Let's, let's load you up in here. We don't need any problems with the police. Go ahead. All right. Is he leaving with her? She's staying with him. You're not by left. She's staying with him? sitting there at the bar drinking. The guy who saw the videotape, who sat there and talked to him, said, don't serve him. And the bartender went ahead and served him. She knew him. I mean, she knew him. He's like, I'm going to send her to jail. I'm like, you're just going to send the mother of your children to jail. Are you going to take care of them? He can't, ta he can't take care of them. I just thought he was a heavy alcoholic. And I did that whole, I'll stand by you. We'll get you in program. And then have to have yeah, to watch him spend son money. Is screaming, screaming for food. But he's gonna go spend money on drinking and taking women out. That just. Uh, That's not a man. <laughs> With the confrontation behind her, Kristen looks to reevaluate her fragile marriage. Later in this episode, Cheaters reveals Kristen's difficult decision. But now, Adon Vasquez comes to Cheaters as an interpreter for Renee Valiente. 
Adon discusses how Rene was affected by his wife's infidelity. Adon Vasquez, age 38. Adon comes to Cheaters as a translator of Rene's feelings upon the discovery of his wife Lavelle's indiscretion. My name is Adan, and I'm a friend of Rene. And I was here translating for him a while back ago because he had a problem with his wife. Oh, he says that, that he thinks that his wife has been lying to him yeah, about nice. questioning. Sometimes he questioned her, and he knows that, that she's lying. And his best friend, he don't want to talk to him on the face, face to face. He can avoid him. When all these stars and Renee's trying to find out what's going on with them, because uh, Renee's best friend, Tony, and his wife, they left Rene and they went down to Mexico, way down there to Guadalajara. And but Rene can handle it by himself here and he decided went down there, going down there and, and tried to find her to see what really what happened, what was his fault, what was his mistake. Uh, so finally six months later he find him. He find her his wife and Tony and they got in, into this confrontation and they got into a fight and then Rene got in big trouble and they got put up on Yale for at least three months. This was mm -hmm. okay. Tony, yeah. this is amigo Tony arriving yeah. at your home. Uh, los fotos están valor que mil palabras. Yeah. Tú entiendes que okay. tú ves, eh? Almost every day. You're at work? Casi todos los días que tú están uh, en, en su trabajo. At least three, four days a week when you're at work, is at your house. Días cada, cada semana, Tony está en su casa. Tony's cousin, uh, her name, Tony's cousin, he always visiting Renee, sent, giving, bringing some food, cigarettes, and writing the letters. So he don't feel so lonely down in jail, down there in Mexico. And for three months, when finally Rene come out of jail, I mean, he starts feeling something for Tony's cousin, Esmeralda, and um, they got together. So now LaBelle and Tony's living in Guadalajara. Rene, he don't want to stay that close to them. So they went to a small town close to Guadalajara named Chapala, and now they living down there. And I've been talking to Rene. I mean, now and then he write me, and he's okay right now. But he's living with Esmeralda, uh, Tony's cousin. And in time, when things cool down, and you have found a new love, mm -hmm. we can be friends again. You, me, and Tony. Yes. With all my love. Well, Rene says he wants to let you, you all know that he's thankful for helping him, because with the help the cheaters came to him, that was the first step to have a better life. He find out what his wife was doing and make it realize now in his second relationship, do better. Shortly after the confrontation, Kristen and Brent Cohn took steps to put their shattered marriage back together. Although both expressed a desire to save the relationship and their family, the details proved to be difficult. In Kristen's eyes, the suspect stepped over the line by kissing his female companion, while Brent claimed that such activity did not constitute infidelity and felt that his wife should forgive him without further ado. Understandably, Kristen was disappointed with her husband's dismissal of her during the confrontation and requested that her husband conduct a follow-up interview with cheaters as a condition for his return. After initially agreeing to do so, Brent later reneged on her offer and was once again seen consorting with his female companion a few days afterwards. Unfortunately, it now appears that their marriage is destined for divorce. Brent's female companion, wishing to put the incident behind her, had no comment for the audience of cheaters. <laughs>